Hi there. So I made some improvements to my Puppeteer GPT project, which is of course a script that uses Puppeteer and the ChatGPT API to enable web browsing with ChatGPT. So let me show you what it can do now. So if I open my project here and I run this script, it will tell me, hello, what would you like to browse today? So how about I say, how old is Elon Musk? And then it will first create a plan for this. And it will say, I will search for Elon Musk's age by navigating to a reliable source and finding the relevant information. Now, okay, that sounds pretty good, but I can say no, and then it will create a new plan if that plan is not good. So now it will say, I will search for the age of Elon Musk by navigating to a search engine and typing in Elon Musk age. Then I will click on the most relevant link that provides his age and extract the information from the page. So that sounds pretty good. So let's do it. So we are going to open Google in Puppeteer and I made it actually now run in the headless mode so we don't see what's going on. But we are typing Elon Musk age and we are submitting the form and we are scraping the page and then we will find out the answer. Except for we clicked on accessibility help. But ultimately, we got the answer. So perhaps because it said in the plan that it is going to click on the most relevant link, then it had to click some link. But actually, when you search for Elon Musk age, the age is directly on the Google search results. But at least we got the answer. Now we can also search for the age from other places. So if I close this and I run it again, and I say, get Elon Musk's age from Wikipedia. Then what it will do is it will create a plan, which is I will go to the Wikipedia page for Elon Musk, find the section with his personal information and extract his age. That sounds good. Now, sometimes it goes directly to the Wikipedia page like this time, but sometimes it goes to the front page and then it searches for Elon Musk and then finds the answer. But this way we should get it right away. And here it is. Elon Musk is currently 52 years old. Now, we can also summarize articles. So I will in fact stop this first because I haven't implemented any context window handling yet. So I will say summarize this article and I will paste in a link to a BBC article. And let's do this. And our plan is go to the URL, read the contents of the article, summarize the article and answer the user with the summary. And that sounds exactly like what I want. So we are navigating to this website and once it has loaded, then we are going to scrape the website. And then we are going to send the website content to ChatGPT and it will respond with the summary. And here it is. According to the article, Vienna, Austria is the most livable city for 2023, followed by Copenhagen, Denmark and Melbourne, Australia. Now, this can't summarize super long articles. Well, I haven't found an article it cannot summarize, but it will be limited to the context length of ChatGPT, which in this case is 16,000 tokens because we are using the GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K model. Now, this tool can also fill in forms. So I have previously created this form using my GPT Autopilot project. So this is just a software developer job application with some fields that might be in a software developer job application. I also have a file called resume.txt into which I've put some dummy information, just made up stuff. So I have a name and an email and a phone and an about me section. And my GitHub profile is that. Not sure if that's an actual profile, I just made that up. And I want a salary of $100,000. Now, this is currently running on localhost, but this could be anywhere on a website. This is just for demonstration purposes because I couldn't think of a form that I should try to fill in. So if I run this again, and I say this, read my resume from resume.txt and fill out the job application for me at, and here I have the address. So this can actually read files. Now, this is not GPT Autopilot, which is my other project that can do lots of things, but I did add this read file function so that you can do this kind of stuff. So if I send this, what will happen is we will create a plan again. Read the contents of resume.txt. Go to the job application website. Fill out the job application using information from the resume. Submit the form. 
So I will say, yes, I want to do exactly that. Then it will say, I want to read the file resume.txt. Now, before I run this, I should probably go into that folder. So here I have this job application form and I have an applications folder into which it will save all the applications. So I will keep this open here at the same time as we run this. So let's do that and let's see what it does. So it will first, of course, read the file. It will go to localhost. It will scrape the page and then it will send all this information to the form and it will submit the form. Now, in fact, it did not submit the form. So that's a small bug. And it, it answered me with the information. But I will try this one more time. So let's run this again. And I will paste in my prompt. And that looks good. So I will say yes. Now with GPT-4, it probably would do it better. But it's so expensive that I want to use the 3.5 version. So now we are scraping the page and we are sending all this information and we still did not submit it. So that is kind of annoying. I will need to fix this after this video, but let me run this in the headless false mode so we can actually see what it is doing. So if I paste in my prompt and I do this, then it will now actually open the browser after I say, yes, I want to do this. So now we have the browser open here and I will close this now. And in fact, I have to say, yes, I agree to reading files. So here it is. And we are now going to type in all the information, right? Just like that. But for some reason, it is not submitting this form. And I really want to scroll down, but I cannot scroll down. So there's actually a cover letter here that it wrote. So it did this. Dear hiring manager, I am writing to apply for the software developer position at your company. And so on. Sincerely, Jack Jordanson. So let's try another example. So I'll close this again and I will say, write a tweet about the latest YouTube video by unconventional coding. Now, if I just say this, it will actually try to go to Twitter and write a tweet. So I added this, find their latest video and answer me with a tweet. So let's do that. And now I ran this again in the headless false mode. So we can actually see what it's going to do. So first it will say, I will go to the YouTube website and search for unconventional coding to find their channel. Then I will navigate to their channel and the video section. Okay, let's do that. That sounds pretty good. Now I had to work a long time to make this one work. So let's see if it actually works this time. So we are opening YouTube here and next we are going to be scraping this page. And as you can see, <laughs> we have these red borders around everything that it scraped. So it will scrape all of the input fields so that it can actually type into the search bar, which it didn't actually do. I think it changed the URL. No, it did it. And then we are scraping this page and then we are finding the link to my channel. And hopefully we are going to click on it. And we actually opened a video, which is an advertisement, which is, okay, this is my latest video, actually. Integrating Puppeteer GPT with GPT Autopilot. Now, it will not close the browser, so I will have to check the answer. So we are scraping the page right now. And then we should get a tweet about my latest video. Now, of course, it didn't watch the video, but here we have it. Check out this awesome video by Unconventional Coding. Integrating Puppeteer GPT with GPT Autopilot, Internet Browsing with AI Agent. It's a great demonstration of how to combine these two powerful tools for seamless internet browsing. Hashtag coding, hashtag AI, hashtag internet browsing. So those are some of the things that it can do. Now there's one more demo I want to show you. And I actually tried to make this work in the previous video, but I was not able to. But now it works. So if I say download the latest version of PHP, then it will say go to the official PHP website, find the download page and download the latest version of PHP. So I will say yes. And we are going to the downloads page directly. And then sometimes it clicks the link to download it as it did now, but sometimes it just answers here, you can download it from this link. And I added this detection of the download. So the puppeteer is actually going to download the file. And it will say the latest version of PHP has been downloaded. And if I go to my download folder, 
then here it is. We have PHP 8.2 tar.gz. So it works. Now, the integration between GPT Autopilot and this does not work that well. And the reason is because I currently have integrated only with this one function. So I have a browse internet function that says that you have an AI agent that you can use to browse the internet. And then it has to give it an objective what to do and then a return value what it wants it to answer back. But the problem is that it doesn't have the context of the web browser. It doesn't have all the text. So it has to ask for specifically what it wants. So I should really integrate it so that it knows the actual things it scraped already. But it can do some cool things. Now, I haven't tried it out that much, so I actually don't know what it's capable of. But for example, we could say something like GPT Autopilot, I will use simple, and I will use system default, and I will use browsing. And I will say delete to delete the old files. And we could probably do something like find out how the function calling API of OpenAI works and create a sample program. So of course, ChatGPT doesn't have information about the function calling API. So it has to actually browse the internet. So it is going to openai.com and it is scraping the page to find all the links on it and it will <laughs> do something. Okay, so we typed function calling API documentation to null. Okay, so this is some sort of bug. I'm not sure if I updated my latest code in GPT Autopilot. Let's try this one more time. Find out how the function calling API of OpenAI works and create a sample pro. So we will go to openai.com and we are going to again type function calling API to null. So I'm not quite sure what is happening there. So I have to fix this integration at some point. Now it in fact did something. So we got a very long response. I'm currently unable to browse the internet. <laughs> However, I can still help you with creating a sample program using the function calling API. Okay, so we have some sample code that is for DaVinci Codex. Okay, this is not real or at least not up-to-date code, but I should be able to make it work. Now, if I check what this actually asked Puppeteer GPT, I can find it here in the history. So here's the problem. It just said, find out how the function calling API of OpenAI works. And now, in fact, we got some error, so it didn't get the answer. But even if it did get the answer, this might not give the correct result because we actually should like scrape the whole page and get the whole information to GPT Autopilot. So I'm going to have to implement that separately into GPT Autopilot. But anyway, that is going to be it for today's video. If you want to try it out, you can go to my GitHub repository that I will link in the description. And if you want to know more of the technical details of this, then let me know in the comments and I might make a video about how I made it work better from the original version. And if you like this kind of content, then consider joining as a member on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Or just send me some OpenAI API token money. <laughs> and I want to thank my latest members, Shemaya and Joseph. Thank you very much for joining. And you can also book a Google Meet call with me if you want me to help you with some of your projects or if you want to just ask me something about my projects or whatever you want to talk about, I am willing to talk for money. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.